Okay, so let's get started. Oh, I need to get that down. Let's get started. I'm going to, first of all, let, just as a reminder, remember, like we said, we talked about the lean and green, um, our lean and green meal last week in element um, 11. And this week we are going to be talking about element 12. Let me get the share. There we go. Okay, element 12. So element 12 is um, the element and it, the element 12 is about optimizing your success. It's the why what you know just isn't so at this point. Um, element 12 um, really is big about change, getting that mindset. Um, when we first come into program, a lot of times we've heard all about, you know, healthy choices and things that should be healthy choices but in this particular one it talks the, our focus is on the mind that mindset of why timing is so important in terms of of waiting before we add key habits to our optimal health during that um during our five and one plan but then also the skill set of describing why the system works the way it does and um clarifying some important things like in guidelines that are a part of the five and one that um, we may or may not, you know, that we may question. Usually it's the things that we question so much at the beginning as we're doing our five and one plan. And then also creating that action plan of using um, a checklist to maximize our success. So this quote, oops, hold on a second, cause it's got my little picture bar right on top of the middle of it, so I can't see it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this quote is from Dr. A. It says, reaching our healthy weight is our first priority and the most profound change you can make in, to, your, to your health. So during phase one of our plan, our goal is to yeah. reach our focus and our goal is reaching our optimal weight um, first. So that's why timing becomes so important. So first on the mindset, the timing with our mindset um, and the relationship in five and one. I don't know how many people are five and one. Five and one is the primary plan. So on that five and one plan, there are some key things that we all learn, that we know about, you know, we hear about, you know, having healthy, you know, having lots of vegetables, doing lots of exercise. Um, fruits are important, whole foods are important, but in the 501 plan, a lot of those things are a on pause and a wait. And so these are the key areas that help, that help in this chapter, that's where we learn kind of the understanding of that. So first of all, thinking about fruit. Um, I don't know about you. I was the person who absolutely love fruit. Like I could eat fruit all day, every day, <laughs> all types. Um, and growing up in central Florida, I was extremely addicted to like in the wintertime, I looked forward to grapefruit. That was like my thing. And I'm like, grapefruit is so good for you. Um, so I know when I first started, I started in November. So of course it was peak grapefruit season. And the thought of, I can't have grapefruit. Why not? Grapefruit is good for you. But the reality is that in phase one in our program, the focus is on getting off the excess um, fat and getting our body to burn the fat. And fruit, although very helpful, health, healthy, is a high glycemic um, index item. And because it's primarily sugar, gets when you get fueled from sugar. So that's why in the in our five and one during the phase one, we don't, we have, we don't have the fruit because in phase one, this, this slide shows us that in phase one, what we're doing is we're lowering the calories with healthy fuels. So we're fueling our body with food through the, um, our fuelings and our lean and green meals, which we're also then on the internal part shutting off that sensor to help us that for insulin and we're lowering our insulin, which is what's creating the fat burn. 
we're lowering that insulin level so that we can burn the fat. Now that we're burning the fat, now our body is using that fat to fuel and the fat is emptying out, which is where we get that maximum change in the physical sides while we measure and keep track of, watch our measurements and watch our actual physical change happening. Because again, in phase one, the goal is to get to our maximum health weight size first and get off the excess fat. Then once we re reach our goal in phase one, then we reintroduce back in those fruits slowly in an order. And um, that's when we learn the color thing. One of the things important about this particular element is making sure um, throughout it that the, it is, let's see, I think it's on page. It's, it's um, 2.6 in our, in Dr. A's book which talks about the, the fruits and the order and the things about them, the colors um, about our fruits when we reintroduce them. Um, if you look in your book, they also show, you know, the habits when we have um, our normal habits, lots of sugar intake, which then increases that fat and feeds what I, what I always say, feeds that fat, which is where, what got us to that weight, the, the, that shape that we didn't want to be. So we're looking for our optimal health. So that's why fruits are not a part in phase one. And then the thing to that in this one, in my book, it's 238. But one of the things that I remember thinking about is all the places where we have those hidden sugars that we don't ever think about. Um, and there was an exercise in there and it talks about going into like looking at your morning routine and the things you have. And the thing that kind of caught me a little off guard, not that I would eat toothpaste, but thinking about the sh their sugar content in toothpaste, their sugar content in mouthwashes, because that's what helps us to be able to like be willing to use them. Um, and we're not swallowing it, but a little bit of that is a being of, is going to get absorbed into our body. So we have to be conscious. Where I had to learn was the sugar in my creamer because I didn't, I don't really like coffee. <laughs> I like creamer. I always liked the creamer. So I drank coffee for cream. <laughs> um, so I did learn real quick how to use our shakes as cream sometimes. And that was awesome. <laughs> an awesome discovery. Um, but paying attention to that because we, we are limiting that insulin level, those insulin intake, that sugar intake so that our insulin keeps us in a fat burn. Um, then the next, oops, whoops, sorry, went too fast. I clicked the button. I didn't want to, um, I'm going to unshare for a second. So one of the other things, um, that is that so there were the three parts the the fruit one other thing um thinking about is exercise so in the um chat before you started your plan i want you to think of your mindset then and and your mindset about exercise and the its importance in in you being able to lose start losing weight like when you thought about wanting to lose weight or get a healthy body. I want a one. If it was like, I, that was a number one. I knew I needed to go to the gym and I needed to be in the gym every single day, or I needed to really be exercising a lot. A two, if you were like, well, I knew I needed to exercise some, and I was thinking two or three days and a three, if you were like, yeah, if the only way I'm going to lose weight is to exercise, it's not happening. <laughs> right. Lots of ones, lots of ones. Thank you for being honest with the threes. <laughs> Cause there, there, there are some of us, I was the two, I was one of those twos, but I was, I had a mindset that I thought the only way it was going to work was as a one. Um, is that the only way you lose weight is you have to go to the gym and be one of those people that are there seven days a week for an hour every day. Um, but I, that was my training, but then my 
thought was, if that's the only way it's going to happen, it's not going to happen, number three, <laughs> which averages to a two. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our slide. So remembering, oops, get this back. I don't, I want to go back. So when it comes to exercise, during phase one, for those first few weeks, first three weeks or so, our body is going through an adjustment um, because of the fact that we are now changing its thought, its patterns that we have built to help us to burn the fat. That's an adjustment. So we, we don't exercise during the first three weeks just because that's kind of too much shock on the body is how Dr. A basically describes it. It's a little bit of shocking and you risk um, becoming hypoglycemic. So like get your sugar levels getting too low, which is extremely dangerous. So we don't, we say don't exercise during those first three weeks. If you're not already, don't start. <laughs> it's not the time to start. But then after that, slowly introducing in some exercise, moderate exercise, walking for 20 minutes, three times a week, or that, those kinds of things. Um, and then as you get to your, you lose weight, number one, your body is better able to handle the work, handle workout. Because if you, you know, I know that I, my movements weren't as well, but then I discovered after that, once my body got into that, I noticed one of the first things I remember noticing is when I would, I didn't have an issue about running upstairs in my house because my house is two stores. And I used to bring everything I needed to for the day downstairs and sit at the bottom of the steps or somewhere downstairs because I didn't want to have to keep coming up and down the steps. And then one of the very first changes I noticed with me was once I got into that, then I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go up and down the steps a couple of times because that was an, an exercise. It was a healthy movement going up those stairs. And I noticed all of a sudden, wait, I'm not breathing hard when I get to the top. It was like I just went on up the stairs. Um, another thing is I used to one step coming down because the pressure on my knees was so bad. And then as I started losing the weight, I noticed I was coming down the step like a normal person. And I wasn't even thinking about it all of a sudden. Like I was walking the steps like you're supposed to instead of one leg, one step at a time, or like a child. Um, so that's kind of where that does. And then we slowly reintroduce in exercise as we get to our goal. Then we move to phase two. Then that health, healthy exercise is a key element to maintaining and keeping the, the weight off and not returning to those old habits. Because then we, we have a, a, I think I've heard, I've heard some refer to it as a lean, mean, fat burning machine that's functioning properly. So now the exercise is balancing it out for that maintenance. Um, and then whole foods, once again, we're gonna go back, hold on, let me get my little chat pop open. So once again, we're gonna use the same scale, except for we're gonna to refer to eating whole foods. When it comes to eat, when it came to eating whole foods in your mindset before starting five and one, where you were one, you knew that was going to be, you had to change and only eat whole foods and only eat all, you know, just that was the main thing about your food. Two, um, yeah, you knew you should, but you weren't really, you kind of like, eh, I'll change certain things. I, I can change certain things. Or three, if I got to stop eating the things that I'm eating, it's not going to happen. <laughs> the things I love, it's not going to happen. I was that too. I knew there were certain things, lots of twos. Twos was the popular thing. Um, I knew the one, I knew that's what it took, but mentally I also was more of well I can change if I change certain things that will help um and so in the program yes whole foods become important in phases and phase two and and in the rest of your life and maintenance but in phase one our focus is on those fuelings we're learning I call it I've always called my leaning green meal my training meal always have um, I called it, I called, I've called it from day one, my meal that I train on, um, because 
it was that meal that helped me start understanding how foods, what types of foods were good for my body and nourish my body. Um, but the fuelings were the ones that were, were made it easy, made the process easy. Um, I always tell people, I'm like, it's, you know, people are always like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. You've done great. You must have worked really hard. And I can honestly say in my head, and for me, I didn't ever think of it as really hard. And that's because of the fuelings. The fuelings made it easy. The lean and green meal helped me to make it attainable and sustainable is really how I look at it. Doing that lean and green meal made it so I can actually see how it's sustainable, <laughs> um, which to me is one of the important parts of getting through phase one, because you don't wanna go through phase one, get to the end, know nothing new, know no changes, and then now what do I do? Then I go into phase two, and before you know it, it's a vicious cycle, and I'm back to where I was. Um, so whole foods are important, but we reintroduce them after phase one slowly so that we understand how to use them to sustain our, our new bodies and our new lifestyle. So then how do we do that? How do we make that happen? We make that happen there. <laughs> um, by using checklists, using our checklist to success. It's very important that you eat a fueling every three hours. Um, don't skip meals, even if you don't feel hung, even if you're not feeling hungry, um, don't skip meals um, because those calories are critical in that fuel is critical and that schedule is critical in getting your body to do what it's supposed to do. Otherwise your weight loss is slowed. Um, you won't lose or it will slow down. Um, for the most part, for me, the easy part to remember about that is I've I knew all my life, I knew that a lot of why I, the weight I had wasn't because I ate so much. It was because I didn't eat properly. I would eat maybe two meals a day. And then those meals were unhealthy. So my body wasn't, was doing exactly what I was training it to do. It was trying to um, basically starve itself. It was, it was saying, you're starving me. I'm going to hold on to every ounce of fat you put into me so that I have something to eat while you're choosing not to eat anything. So that's why it's important. Now I notice if I can tell when it's three hours because my body says, hello, I used what you gave me. I need more. <laughs> I used what you gave me. I need more. And that means that it's being the machine that it's supposed to be. It's working like it's supposed to. Um, number two, I mean, next, um, get some rest. Sorry, get rest. Um, Make sure that you're, you know, you, you might be tired at the beginning, but then as you progress and that fat burn sets in and you have all that energy, it's still important to get rest because during our resting hours is when our body kind of rejuvenates itself and really maximizes that, um, bur that process of burning off the excess fat, making sure we're drinking our water every day eight ounces, eight glasses, eight ounces. I don't ever think about eight glasses. For me, 64 ounces was a much easier process to think about. And because I've always been the person that a eight ounces of water was a swig. <laughs> like in my mind, that was just a swallow of water. So I think 64 ounces and I, that's my, you know, that's my bare minimum. Um, eat slowly. I was always a slow eater, but eating slowly, enjoy the taste. Um, I don't do what I used to call, to accuse my brother of inhaling our food. Inhaling food means you don't taste it. <laughs> enjoy the taste of the fuel, the food that you're putting into your body. Um, stay busy and avoid places that I call your triggers, trigger places. 
they have smells or reminders of things connected to unhealthy eating, um, especially during the beginning. Once you're in and you start realizing those things start becoming less and less of a trigger because now your, your energy and you're moving and you're doing the things you, you know, you're seeing the difference in yourself. Um, have a support system. You're, you know, call your coach, blow their phone up. That's what they're there for. When you're having that day, when it's just a rough day and you just need to send them a message, whether you need to talk to them or not, just send a message. I'll send my coaching message. This is what's going on. Just pray for me. I don't need to talk to you. Just pray for me. And I just needed you to know. And then later I'll let her know, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I got through that. I need to push through that. Um, um, if possible, get that accountability friend, that friend that's going to be supported, not the friend who is still trying to figure out why you're doing what you're doing. Because in, in their mind, they're really just sitting back and watching to see what happens. Because they want to be on the ready for the I told you so if you don't succeed. Let them sit over there and wait for the I told you so and show them that they're never going to get the same. Find the friend that's going to say, you got this. You got this. Keep pushing. Um, uh, and um, If you slip up, that's not time to beat yourself up because if you slip up and you beat yourself up, then you're going to go back and say, see, I couldn't do it. But if you slip up and you say, you know what? I'm human because we are human oh, newsflash. And you remember that you're, you're going to make mistakes, get right back on track, keep moving, just know in your mind, that, okay, that choice may cost me a couple of days, but in a couple of days, I'll be right back where I was and keep moving. Um, then your life book is your best friend. Go back to that life book, go back in there, remind yourself of your why, go back to your why. And if it needs to be updated, update it, but remind yourself of your why, especially in those low times, track what you're doing. It's hard to make mistakes when you're tracking, when you got to write down what you're doing. So that kind of helps you. Um, of course, this PowerPoint says the Habits of Health app, but the Optavia app, um, or just some whatever app you choose to use to track your health and help you stay on track is the one, because the only app that's going to, the only thing that's going to be helpful when it comes to an app is one you're actually going to use. So if you're not going to use it, don't bother with it. But if you're going to use it, that's a helpful tool for keeping track. Uh, yes, Linda. Because I, I think it's Linda. Yeah. You're muted. If you're talking right now, you're muted. Yes, I was finally able to get on, and I'm uh, new. I'm Donnie Harrison. Um, he's my coach, and I'm glad to be on. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to our group. I finally got on. <laughs> <laughs> I will have, I've had some problems with it, but I'm doing good with my uh, Optiva diet. So. Awesome. I'm losing, awesome. losing weight, so I'm glad. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> glad we you're finally able to get in yes so, so i'll continue with the recording okay mm -hmm. okay then. so um again remember during that first three weeks avoid exercise after that you'll we'll do exercise but in a reduced amount um just getting some ideal movement getting in some movement to help your body to, again, get into that habit of doing what it's supposed to do. So here's your question. And I want you to um, actually take a moment to, if you have a piece of paper, write it down. What actions are you going to take today? I mean, this week to, um, as a result of this element, what are some things, be honest with yourself, what are some things that as we were going through this element, 
were actions you know either you need to start doing or you know you were doing and now you need to re-implement. You know, like for me last week, it was the measuring my vegetables. What are the things based on this information, what actions are you gonna take, take about? Mm. And then is there anybody willing to share? Maybe one or two people. I'll share you only. Okay. You know, Cheryl hit the nail on the head earlier when she was talking about fruit that she'd added back in. Now Cheryl's already at her goal weight. She's mm -hmm. transitioned. She's she's optimizing her health in many different ways. And um, I was a little bit like that in the fact that um, I was adding a lot more fruit in again myself. And um, you know, at that point in time. When you go back and you reread this this element, it really reminds you, gosh, there's a lot of sugar. And when you look at the high glycemic and low glycemic index charts, and when Yoli referred to the color charts, those are all in our Habits of Health book. Right. And so I decided, you know what, it's time to go back to this super, super, very low glycemic index fruits for me, if I'm going to have fruit and kind of cut them back or at least pull them way back. Because, you know, it's it, two, three, four pounds will sneak up on you really, really quick. And so you dial it back in a little bit. And um, I love that she started that, uh, that she shared that right before we went into this, because a lot of people have those questions about fruit. And those, you know, that's truly why we, I, I was a big fruit eater before. And um, it was this, I was kind of the same way he only was in the beginning. I was like, wait, what? I can't have fruit, but I've learned my body doesn't handle bananas very well. I might as well just peel them and slap them on my thighs. So I, I stay away from the high glycemic index fruits now. So, you know, it, it's really kind of neat to see that we definitely something we've learned. Anyone else? Okay, so, well, that is the element 12. So glad everybody could join. Um, another question, if you look at the end of the element 12 thing, there is actually three questions. That one is one of them, but one of the other ones is, is really thinking about what does this element mean to you right now? And then the final was, what are you gonna do with it? So I'm glad everybody could get on. I hope that you this was helpful um, and that you heard something that was helpful for you. Um, and I hope everybody has a great week if there's no questions. Thank you. <laughs>